in this code sample we have a um, small activity that use colors defined as resources. Well, in order to define a color as a resource, we should create an XML document and place it within the values folder, uh, the folder within res. We can name the XML file with any name we want, it's not a problem, there is no limit about the name of the XML file. Each color has a name and each color has a value. Um, in this code sample, when I call the get resources method, I get a reference for the resources object on which I can call the get color method, passing over the ID of the specific color I'm interested at, I'm actually getting back the color which is later assigned to the text view in this code sample. In this code sample we have a simple activity with one text view and that text view is spanned all over the screen and its background is actually the color defined uh, in a separated XML file. Another thing to pay attention to is that just as any other resource, the moment I define a new color as a resource, the color has a name, and each name of a color, you can find it as a variable within the R class, the auto-generated class. Here you can find a variable named alert color, nice color, and each one of these variables are defined as static int variables within the color uh, inner class, static inner class within R. So we can actually access each one of these um, static int variables by placing r.color.name of the specific int variable we want to access. And then this is an expression, its value is the ID number of the color we want to use and all that is an expression that returns uh, the color we want to use and assign it to the set background color method, a method that expects to get an int value that describes a specific color. Well, the outcome of this code sample is this, well, you can see the small letters of hello, uh, this is the text that we have left in the text view, and the background is the very specific color defined here in the XML file as a color that its name is alert color.